All right. Uh, thank you for joining uh, today's session with Starrise Connect. We have a important VIP with us today, uh, uh, Fritz at Sling Data. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about Sling Data and uh, how it works with Star Rocks. Yes, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so for, first, Fritz, I mean, before we start with the, with the session, why don't we, we, we talk a little bit about you? Why don't we you know, introduce who you are, how you get into data, what was your background, you know, uh, yeah. Anything you can share a little bit about yourself uh, and and your journey into into data? Yeah, no, happy to. Um, I got into data probably like a decade ago. You know, um, I didn't study any analytics or programming. For a fact, I study like electrical engineering, and um, I got into programming. I got a job where I was looking at a lot of telecom data. You know, like call center data. And I found it fascinating, so I kind of switched gears and, and changed my, the direction of my my career. And I've been in it ever since. You know, it's been over a decade, and um, I just find the system fascinating. Just diving into different technologies, uh, learning, uh, teaching yourself new things, and realizing the power of programming, of automation. Um, so yeah, like, uh, getting into databases, learning SQL, right. And Python, just all kinds of, of database technology. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, hopping through companies right now, I work for full-time for a company called big time data. We're a consultant, consultant, uh, consultancy, that's small consultancy. And, uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of data work, you know, so sling, uh, started before that, you know, it was, a side project that I evolved over the years, you know? So, um, yeah, that's how I came today. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for that background. So um, why don't you tell us a little about uh, the genesis of, of Sling Data and, and you know, how, how you actually built the, the, the software? Where did it come from? Where, where did your inspiration come from? <laughs> um, it, it came from frustration, for sure. Like. Uh, uh, just wanting to do easy things, right? As a as a data engineer, you want to do small operations um, over and over, right? And maybe tweak some things here and there, right? And moving from you know working on project to project, you kind of either have to modify it a lot or kind of start from scratch, right? So or it evolves and it's not good, like your scripts, your Python scripts. It's kind of like not very flexible. So uh, over time, it's kind of like, man, like, why do I have to redo that every, you know, every new job kind of like I have to rebuild a script. <laughs> and uh, so Sling came, came out from that, from a lot of just having to redo, rebuild things over and over, right? That, that things that load, loading data, loading a JSON, loading whatever, right? Moving from this database to database. Um, and it, uh, it just, uh, yeah, once uh, I, I sort of started learning Go, right? Because I did this stuff with Python, right? There's different versions of, of Sling, like different <laughs> <laughs> scripts that, you know, take inputs and then does, does what you want it to do. But uh, I really loved uh, the Go binary nature, right? That you can sort of like program uh, uh, and, and generate a binary and this thing is static right not having to deal with python dependencies and uh not worrying about any of that stuff right because you kind of get bit over the years you you see what happens and it's like something that used to work fine doesn't work anymore <laughs> so like i didn't do anything so uh anyways yeah so have combining those two really go which i enjoy working with a lot um and and uh, the the like data movement and, and data work that you needed to do, right? So it, it kind of meshed over the years and, and I uh, really grew a passion for developing it because I saw how useful it was for me, right? I can have this, this binary that I can and, and, and just reprogram like just inputs, you know, and it, it did it faster than Python, right? Because it, it's, uh, it's Go, right? So. Um, that's where it started, right? From my, all my experience and wanting to make things convenient for myself, like uh, to improve my quality of life, if you want to say. 
<laughs> but you, you're hitting on a good point, right? I mean, a lot of the best tools that are in the market today are ones where developers ran into a problem and we wanted, we didn't find a tool in the marketplace that would solve it. Yeah. And we built something for us, right? And, yes. you know, and then the thing is, is that you just find out that, oh, maybe if I add some other use cases or maybe other people have the same problems, it expanded from that standpoint, right? And, you know, I love these projects because, you know, you're not doing it for, you know, a hypothetical like uh, unicorn status from that staff with a hypothetical like, you know, use case. This is something yeah. that helps you with your day to day every single day. And you are inspired by the work that you do for yourself and for your customers and for the people you work with. And you just like build what you need. Right. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And j just to add, like, yeah, it's like when you're your first target, like you're building it, 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 you can shape it the perfect way that you want it to do. Right. So that was, that was, yeah, that was totally the mindset and uh, it, it kind of, yeah, it took off over time. Right. And people are like, Hey, I actually need this myself. <laughs> so, 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 um, why don't we switch to the slides? Cause I don't want to go in and, and just uh, quiz you over yeah. and over. Oh, but that's true. Yeah. Let, 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 let's go to the slides. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Is it showing? Can't see. Uh, Great. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I did a little bit of, of background already. Uh, so what does it what does it do? Right? What is it? Sling is a lightweight tool, really. If you want to like remember, a lightweight tool that, that moves data around. And um, is Genesis really at the beginning? It was like it was a big like beyond just uh, like let's say databases and files because I was thinking also APIs, but APIs is a massive world that keeps evolving and it, it became apparent like after the first year or so of, of building sling that apis weren't gonna cut it right it's it's it would be poor quality right you're constantly maintaining it so sling focuses on data movement it's a slightly tool that focuses on data movement between databases and file systems so you can copy data from a database or file system back from, from a file system to a database or between file systems or between databases, right? So it really just specialized, focuses on that need. Um, so this is like did a, I, uh, Parquet on, on S3 or CSV on a file system, right? So yes. basically wherever a file is stored, it could be either a source or a target from whatever it says. So basically you treat databases and files as equivalents. Yes, totally. And uh, some of them it doesn't write, like for example, it doesn't write the SAS 7, like the SAS files, it only reads it, or Avro, it only reads it. But most of them, yes, you can read or write uh, in any platform, right? Uh, like all of those listed at the bottom. And uh, basically if you wanna load data uh, from a file system, like those are the most popular one. I know there's some missing that I'll mention later, but you can use Sling to load it into any of the, those databases. Most of them, at least. For right. example, we don't write to, to Mongo yet or Prometheus. Prometheus is like exporting only. But most of them absolutely can just write. Anything. And so also with Sling is that you, you not only understand the formats, but you also do the, the type transformations, right? So, when one type doesn't exist on, say, for instance, like for instance, I, I know in Star Rocks you did something for us in terms of like like var car for us is actually, you know, number of 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 bits. It's not actually number of of characters, right? And so you actually wrote the translation between that. But would you say it's the same for all the other databases that that you guys also support? Yes. Yeah. Um, there is the type inference, right? especially CSVs, it's just string. Like Parquet has the types, uh, JSON doesn't have types. Well, it has some of them, it has numbers or string, right? But we, we can't determine a date, for example. Um, but CSVs are very popular and it has, Sling has this built-in profiling like on the fly, like as it, it does it like in, like in the beginning of the ingestion, like it does it as a buffer in memory 
kind of like analyze the sample size and then determine the types, like I just said, uh, Albert, and like whether, and, and translates from like a general type to a native type, right? So the general type may be a text or string and then in native it's var char, like we just said. So yeah, it does that automatically. That's the, that's the, it generates the DDL for you, right? For any files. And that's something that I wanted for a long time because you had like manually creating DDLs for files is very tedious. So yeah. Very cool. So uh, what are some other things that, that Sling does too, right? Uh, does it do like transformations? Um, yes. Like, uh, so there's a lot of documentation on this, but uh, I'll just go over a little bit on, like it can flatten JSONs, right? Let's say you have a big JSON, that's the JSON, and it, they'll create the, the columns for you, like, like, like uh, the nested columns, which I find so handy, right? Um, there's some other stuff like, let's say, uh, hashing. It can hash columns. You can say, hey, um, this is a private like, or a sensitive field. I want to hash it. So Sling can, you can define that in your config, and Sling will do that for you. Um, there's, there's many things like, like trimming, trimming extra spaces, right? Things like that. Uh, Interesting. So you do hashing, you probably can do masking. You probably could also do, you know, where you have, uh, you know, you can have a select statement maybe, right? Uh, oh, yes. That, target, that's right. right. Yeah. So the, the custom, yeah, it can do custom queries, right? That's one thing that a lot of tools don't allow you to do, right? Um, so it doesn't. Like a lot of tools just allow you, hey, just, just a stable or, you know, that's it. You don't want, you can't just do custom operations at the source, right? So it allows you to specify a custom SQL uh, so that you can do a lot more like natively, right, from the source and not have to worry, um, not have to be super creative, like to just do some transformation. Now that's awesome because I know there's a lot of limitations, especially when you want to, you know, uh, basically, you know, execute some type of SQL query and you want that to be mm -hmm. output somewhere else, right? You want to basically redirect, you know, the, the output to something or redirect the stream, the pipe, right? Exactly. Um, Exactly. Cool. And so all these databases you, you, you've listed, so obviously Star Rocks was, was, was listed there. And do you support uh, Streamload as part of, of the Star Rocks implementation? Yes. And um, yeah, it works well. It's pretty fast instead of having the inserts. Uh, the one thing that's on the room map, for example, is the files using the files interface. So I know uh, you told me they're working on things. So yeah, but Sling will support that when it's when it's uh, more mature, I guess, so when it's ready. But it does yeah, but, stream. Yeah, yeah, so that's cool for the people in the audience. So the thing is, is that for most other tools, they don't actually use stream load, right? And as you know, is that, you know, you have basically two big methods to, to move in data, right? You, you either do SQL inserts or SQL batch inserts, and that's good from that standpoint. But you still have to go through the FE eventually to the B, to the backend nodes or the CN nodes. But if you use Streamload, uh, the HTTP interface, it actually bypasses the entire front end. So it bypasses the MySQL translation layer and goes yes. straight into storage. And because of that reason, it's just going to be much much more faster on the ingestion rates, right? Um, yeah. So, so, and, and then, uh, you know, uh, and, and personally, I think, uh, you know, just to add on, like I've tried, uh, the, the snowflake to star rocks movement, uh, that pipeline, it works well, the duck DB pipeline, the Postgres, the MySQL. I haven't found one issue yet. And, uh, the other interesting thing too, is that even if the, uh, the, the, the times match, you can actually even change the types in flight. Um, I thought yes, that was that, cool, right? Because if you're yes. like going, like, okay, this is like, um, this is like float, and I want to change it to decimal on another system or whatnot. I forgot which one it was. It was one or the other, or whatnot, right? I could just do it on the fly instead of me kind of like doing another, you know, um, transformation 
uh, once it landed inside of Star Rocks, right? So I thought that was yes. pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, I guess I'll go to the next. Yeah, yeah, next yeah. Slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit about how Sling is being adopted. Um, it um, it really, like when, when Daxter, I'm assuming most people know about Daxter, they integrated it natively. When I say natively, it's like a tight integration um, with Sling. And Sling is a Go binary, right? So uh, Daxter is Python, but there's a Python wrapper for Sling that, that you know, pretty much allows you to, to, to submit arguments to your the binary and does it for you. So uh, it's supported by Daxter, uh, and that's, that opened up a lot of, of I guess, uh, audience, right? A lot of people started uh, just using it, right, with Daxter. Uh, so uh, recently, this article came out where uh, they, uh, I think it's people at Daxter, they, they uh, canceled, I guess, a $40,000 contract and used a sling for that, so that's pretty great to be able to uh, supplant that. And on the right, we have some, some customers that use it, um, uh, RexK, Adaptable, and Tailscale. There's, there's a lot more, but I don't, I, I don't have to put the list, of course, since it's a free tool. But yeah, some feedback in, in Docker, right? You can see at the bottom, there's a, there's a lot of downloads. So we'll see probably many more. Um, so yeah, let me um, move on to the demo. So yeah, we'll start with the, uh, and let me know if you can see it, Albert. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is the like the cons subcommand of Sling, right? And it allows you basically to set and manage your connection. So we'll start with uh, setting a Starox connection. So it's pretty simple. You just get your credentials, right? And um, you see how it kind of picked it up now. It writes it to the to the nth. Yeah, well, inv.yaml file, which is basically where you keep your credentials uh, for Sling. So it, Sling picks up credentials from there, from your environment variable, and you'll see soon uh, an example of that. Or, for example, dbt profiles. If you're a user of dbt, which I am, uh, it'll just pick up your connections from there and work out of the box. So, yeah, we did right here, we tested your connection with Sling uh, to Starox. And look at that. So we're testing success, and then we're discovering as well, right? Which means we want to see what tables are available inside Starox. So by the way, this discover command is one of my favorite ones. I find it so useful because you can not only discover databases, but also file systems, right? So let's say in S3, you have a folder. Uh, you want to list things right there. You don't have to go in, in the, you know, the S3 console and all those things just to find out, just to see what files. You can do it right there in Sling. We won't go over that, but that's, that's a capability. So now let's, uh, let's uh, export. We're setting a variable for Postgres. There we go. We picked it up, right? And we're going to test it. Success. And we'll discover it as well with uh, a filter. You see the dash P, which is a pattern, right? So it's only for this schema that we want to see the tables. And um, let's do it another pattern, right? Look at that. So it's the suffix here, and that works just as well. So you can really just find what you want from there. So uh, there's a con exec const exec command, which basically allows you to execute a query. Here it's uh, to see like a preview basically of the, of the, of the table, right? And you see how I uh, did a, the select count here. And this is very useful to, to do some random queries, right? Because there is also the runs uh, to STD out, which is another, I'll, I'll show that in a bit. But this is a great way you, if you want to do some alter command or you want to drop some table and you don't have to go to the, your database client you can just do it right there in your command line so it's a sling cons exec uh, command which is actually fairly new i don't know if you knew about that Albert. um so uh here is the run command right it's pretty beefy uh and you can see the details in the docs i'm not going to go through them but there's a uh, many uh inputs that are possible so let's do a run to the standard output, you see dash L, I limited it to 10 records. Okay, so this is a CSV output basically. 
So just to preview your data, now we're going to actually uh, move data from Postgres into Starox. And there you go. So that was it. It was pretty simple, right? You specify your inputs, and it created a copy um, of the table. I, I went uh, I went into a little bit of detail just to show you how to, the cons work because it's an important aspect. But yes, if you're just moving data, you just, it's three commands. You set your your URI for the source and target, and you run it. If you know your tables, right? You don't need to discover anything. If you know what you need to move, you just it's three commands. That's exactly right. Um, next, uh, I'll go over what uh, is a replication, which is basically a, a way to scale your um, uh, your your ELT, really, right? Instead of having to write many uh, commands, you can write a YAML file or a JSON, and um, and Sling will will sort of like interpret it and 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 do the work, right? So here we have. You see that it's a fairly small. You see the how I did TPCDS catalog star right or asterisk. So now it'll it'll grab everything that meets those conditions and 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 run the stream right. Copy it over. So um, yeah, it, it, I'm not doing all the tables in the schema, but there you go. That's that's pretty much the operation. Like what I think is a very useful. Uh, Capability of Sling, right? This is how you want to put in what you want to put in production, right? You have your replication.yaml and or JSON, and you, uh, you you run that, right? You point Sling to it, and it it does the work, right? So here I'm doing full refresh. There's also incremental modes. There's various things that I'll talk a little bit later. Uh, let's do one more uh, dump from. Starox to DuckDB. Just want to show that it's almost over the video, but just to show you how easy, uh, like if you wanted to copy tables from your Starox database to DuckDB, and that's it. So you see how uh, we can even discover at the column level that table, right? It tells you the native tab in general. So. OK, cool. That's it for this part. Let me switch to slides. Any questions, Albert, or? What, you know, three commands, right? So you, you source, target, you know, run. or uh, And then the other option is basically the, the, the replication YAML is, is just all those settings, but running that as a single mm -hmm. command. Right, so it, it really mm -hmm. is like you could have theoretically. It sounds to me you could have theoretically, you know, took every single line, like converted the YAML into a command, and then just ran yes. it, right? But for simplicity's sake, you guys are probably saying, oh, like maybe store the YAML in Git, right? Version control yes. that, check this on out, run this every like five minutes to do a, you yes. know. A, a catch up on the e ELT job, right? And and therefore, boom, right? You you get like, you know, simple, easy, no UI. I mean, no web based interface. None of this other, you know, extra things. It's just a command for you just to move data, and boom, it just does it, right? Yes, it's very convenient, right? It's just very easy. You have your binary, and you you point it. So imagine maybe like different replications, maybe for different. Of pipelines, basically, replication you can, is, is a pipeline, right? With from one source to another, and you point all the the tables that you want want to run. Yeah. So we'll go over that now. So yeah, the, the replications are designed to scale, right? So this is I went over this a little bit, but the options, for example, trim space, right? If you want to like clean it up a little, bit, those are part of the transformations uh, that are available, right? So. Um, uh, yeah, I talked a little bit about the modes. There's incremental, there's snapshot, truncate. Uh, there's a there. There's also backfill. I didn't put it there. Uh, there's uh, source options, right? You can define your column types. Like, oh, this is a decimal. Like, you're you're loading uh, you're loading from a CSV. You want to make sure the target database treats it as decimal. You can specify that. Like I said before, flattening the JSON transforms. Um, and then on the target side, there's bulk loading. You can turn it on and off. It's on by default, but sometimes you have issues with like your database or your configuration. So sometimes you, you have the options to turn it off. There's also the, the schema evolution, right? When things change, Sling, Sling handles that 
uh, uh, gracefully, right? There's a there's a option to turn on like to turn to to change the column types, which is off by default because people may not want that. But Sling through, for example, will auto add a column. You call them from the source, it will automatically add it in, in your in your table. No problem. You can also define pre-SQL and post-SQL, which is useful for a lot of cases where you want to run something right before or after. Any questions, Albert? Comments? No, that th this is awesome, right? That's yeah. You know, I think you covered like almost everything that you know. Most of my biggest pain points with a lot of it. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're even talking about features that that you know other open source tools like Airbind and Fivetran doesn't even have, right? Um, so. Totally. You, you know, you're talking about things where, you know, it's, um, you know, it, 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 that's the thing. So, so obviously you're comparing also, you know, error by Fivetran, right? Are, are there other, you know, other inspirations or other, other uh, open source projects that you would also compare yourself against? Um, well, I know a lot of people, the CLI, the most popular one was Meltano. I know that gained a, a good amount of traction. Um, I, I I think, yeah, I, it, it kind of gave uh, ideas, but it's a bit different in Meltano, right? Meltano doesn't do a lot of this stuff. It's more, um, it, I, it has like the, the YAML or the JSON, but it's more just like uh, setting it and kind of running it. This allows a lot of input and just flexibility, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and just, uh, if, like not strictly open source, but I think all the Python scripts that I've written, right? So <laughs> that really have uh, inspired, I guess you could say, or I've seen, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so just just a few comments on what uh, what the focus is today. Um, it's, to, it's really about having a stability, right? This is the... This is the, the diff difficulty with dealing with so many systems. Um, you really have to um, test a lot. <laughs> like I created a, this big test suite uh, that, that helps a lot, right? To, to, it's like when I change codes and like change some lines and then it breaks something and it's not obvious, right? So it's great to have lots of tests, but for each system, really, you literally have to test it, right? So you should see my, my Docker like machine with all the databases running <laughs> for testing. So uh, yeah, so stability is a big concern. Uh, there there is some errors at times that that need to be fixed. So uh, if you use Sling and you find something isn't isn't working as as expected, please reach out or open an issue on GitHub. And the other focus is keeping the UX pleasant. I think this is a big um, priority, right? Because if if the the UX like suffers, then people like I won't want to use it. <laughs> I have to want to use it. People have to want to use it because it's easy to use. It's pleasant to use, right? So uh, keep it simple, not too complex, and that's a that's a battle in itself. Keeping it simple, right? Because this YAML, this replication has has evolved over time with 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 like different options, right? But then I really consider before adding a new option, it's like you have to really, is it really needed? Uh, because the more the more options you have, the more complex things appear, right? So so that's the focus today into the future. Of course, adding uh, new connectors, right? New capabilities. Uh, I know uh, Delta and Iceberg are, are picking up in Hoodie as well. So that's definitely on the, on the, on the roadmap to support that. Um, also, data quality with all this, this new AI movement uh, is a big deal. So, uh, yeah, seeing how Sling can have those capabilities in the future is a big, big, uh, um, big concern, right? Uh, big, uh, considering all those things. Awesome. Okay. Um, any questions? Moving on. Yeah. It. it, it you know, we're we're talking a little bit about it's it's it's. A little bit of all the greatest hits, right? So when you talk about data quality, there are a bunch of companies like Gray Expectations that that does work in this area, right? Alerting is a really big thing. A failed jobs, you know, uh, you know, making sure that that 
uh, you know, I, I think so. What uh, Monte Carlo is whole mm -hmm. business is built off of alerting, right? Uh, and making sure that pipeline and data is being moved all the all all of it. So, you know, it, it sounds like the idea here is that uh, Sling is is you know. Um, you know, picking and choosing some of the best uh, uh, best open source projects out there, and and combining some of those features into a simple to use utility. Absolutely, exactly. And the keyword is simple. Just having something that that covers most of the use cases, right? Yeah, it be funny, right? Everything. Exactly. Right. Exactly. If they wanted something more sophisticated, they can get the full blown great expectations or or Monte Carlo and whatnot, right? <laughs> But the, the idea here is that it's like we're you're emphasizing you're you're emphasizing ease of use as the big thing and like all the major major use cases, right? That's awesome. Yes. Great. Uh, so how can you try Sling? Uh, you can, uh, yeah. There you go. It's very simple, right? If you have a Mac, it's a brew command. Uh, PowerShell is two commands, <laughs> or just use Python, just to pip install. Or Docker, right? Whatever you want. Uh, I didn't put Linux here because it's a, it's like a curl command and then uh, unzip like a, uh, you know, just decompress. So, but it's it's a it's a few commands, like three four commands for Linux. Um, but you just go on the just go on the website, right? Slingdata.io or the GitHub. You'll see all those things. Yeah, that, that, this remind this screen that that screen reminds me of uh, DB. Right, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I love the product too, right? I'm a big fan of them too, right? So, I mean, their, their installation and ease of use from that standpoint to get it the software installed is, I think, you know, it, it, I think that's the inspiration that a lot of us should take, right? So, you borrowing also that is like, you know, um, uh, you know, mm -hmm. making it. The, instead of you know like you have to you know some of the ones the new ones those install shield all this stuff or the docker setup has to be all this complex stuff right it's like oh my god right so um, absolutely cool cool Great. uh so yeah that's that's all i had uh to show let me switch back and uh uh yeah see if we have any questions yeah, so we we have a, a question from the audience from from Andrew. Uh, he asked the question: Is it possible to check the data integrity between source and target after data replication? Um, so that's a great question because, uh, for for example, I was talking about the test suite. Like making sure that the data is accurate is is important. <laughs> so um, it depends. Sling automatically does a test if the data size is not too big. Uh, I think it's like 10,000 records. Um, I, I got to check, but you can check the source code too. But it does a checksum test, basically like to check on what's passed through Sling. So it doesn't do it like from the source, like on the source, what, whatever it passed through Sling, right? And then it checks if it's the same in the target. So it does that automatically if your data size is not too big. Oh, interesting. Sampling, sampling for what? For uh, inference guess, or? Yeah. So, Andrew, is it sampling like you, we sample X amount every tenth record or every twentieth record, or are you saying that that or it seems to uh, Fritz, you're implying that every single record actually is doing an MD5 hash? Uh, no. Um, when I see a checksum, it's like there's like it sums like different, like let's say the lengths of the values or just the, the values of, of integers, for example, to see if they match, right? Mm. And, uh, and the output, yeah. Mm. And the destination system, yeah. So uh, yeah, it does, it does check. Um, it's just like I said, if it's a massive data set, it doesn't do it um, because of the cost that it would have um, in, you know, in, the, in the system downstream. All right. Let's say you have two billion rows. Like, you don't want to check like that that table every time you run, right? So, so what if you did it? Like, say for instance, you got that 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 same use case, but you wanted to do like 
you know, your your because there was another feature I, I thought in Sling that does is uh, batch sizes, right? So you can do batch sizes of like ten thousand, so so ten thousand at a time, right? It just runs, you know, Sling just you know if you have a million records, it does it 10,000 yes. or 50,000 at a time from that standpoint. So does it do like checking on the 50,000, right? As one unit or, or like you mentioned, it's just checking the individual fields themselves. No. So when I see checking it, so how do you, how can you check that the data is accurate on the, on the target? Right. So, if you if you do every single record that's going to be expensive right yeah, so yeah. and besides you have to you have to check on against something right so the the best way like at least what i've thought of is while it's passive because sling streams right so it kind of the data passes through it once and as it passes through it uh statistics are collected about the data and then when it's inside the target so obviously, if you're writing to a file system, you can't really check, right? Because, mm. yeah, what you'll have to reread the whole file. And yeah, it's not going to work that way. So if it's the target is a database, there's like a, uh, like a summation, for example, of what all the integers, let's say. If the sum is the same inside the sling as the database, right? It pulls a query and it check combines, like it, it compares them after the, 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 the data is written. Uh, then it, it it will tell you right in a, a debug log if something's wrong. But usually, we you know it's fine, right? Because all the tests that have been developed uh, to to do that to make sure it's accurate. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, other questions from the audience. All right, oh, we said. Uh, yeah, I see you come in the Discord link at the footer. Thanks for letting me know. I thought it was because it was um I thought it was uh, uh like it didn't expire. So I'll check that. Thanks. <laughs> well, Fritz, thank you again for your time today uh and, and sharing a little about Sling. I, I learned a lot. Um actually there's a bunch of features that I didn't even go use, right? Uh <laughs> you know, I was using some of the features, but not all of those features, right? And so, I mean, the problem is, is that, you know, um, it, it, like you mentioned, it's really hard to find a good Swiss Army knife for data movement, right? Everything has some type of limitation, right? So either you're, you know, it, it, you either have to go set up something that takes a lot of time, right? Uh, and yes. a lot of times you're like, kind of like, I, I'm an old Unix guy. I'm like, gonna like one utility that you could do, like, you know, you know, 80, 20, right? And if there's really a tool that I really need to do something bigger, then I can go and use that tool. But, you know, I'd rather have like, you know, feel good stuff, like right? feel good, you know, strong tools in, in my toolkit, right? Totally, agreed. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that said, you know, Fritz, do you have, uh, do you have any, uh, so you mentioned a little bit about uh, your your product. Do you have anything else that you'd like to go share about like maybe other upcoming things that you're working on or maybe even some, you know, data events that you might be attending? Um, no, nothing right now. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm very focused on Sling, so that's what I'm working on. And um, but yeah, no, I'm not attending any conferences at the like in the come upcoming ones. You know, All right. But I'll, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you again, and uh, thank, thank you, you. Yeah. for joining. All right. Take care. Bye. Awesome. All right. Bye.